It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Texans and the Chargers coming up next. It was once just an idea until breaking ground in November 2016, and now here it is in all its glory. Spectacular SoFi Stadium here in Metropolitan Los Angeles. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Houston Texans and the Los Angeles Chargers. Brandon Garden alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. turn from just beyond the goal line and he'll be dropped at the 21 yard line so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision loses him about four yards so here's the charger offense making their way out and here's a look at their leader standing 6-4 and what i enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And incomplete to open things up. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They're going to look to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game. And you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. and really gets them amped up as they go forward. On third down, Means, and he'll just get back to the line of scrimmage, if that, and with a flag on the field, and that one looks to be in the area where someone was held. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, he can't hold them. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Back to throw. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Not the desired outcome, but probably won't be the last time we see him take a shot downfield. On is the Chargers punter now. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. Oh. 
So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And out will come the leader of this offense, and that, of course, is their signal caller. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. Now he dumps this off over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Nice little nifty play for him there. He has the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just stuck out there and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. To throw again on second down. White. He finds Hopkins complete. And he's got this down to the 35. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think a guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening round. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive going to plan so far. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he fires one that's intercepted. Derwin James with a pick. And the Chargers will take over possession here. Up at the 44. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points no matter what. At worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Now the ball comes loose, and the Texans scoop it, and they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. and have got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And he had to be pleased at the start of the last drive. The offense was moving, but certainly not pleased at the end result, an interception. And every team we ever talk to at some point in the conversation, the coach, player, someone talks about, you know, we've got to finish. We've got to finish off drives, finish off the game. There's an example there of not finishing, doing everything right, but not getting the result that you need. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. 
Falcons defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays, you know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. On second and 12, White. Pro left side complete to Foster. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. A first down carry for Foster. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Yeah, now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. More from L.A. in a moment. on second down and this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage now they're staring at a third and eight that last play backwards a yard I one thing I was about to see growing up track and field I could never anticipate the start before a race but how about that backer he figured it out jumped the count and turned it into a really nice play for his defense They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is. Here on third. White looks to throw. And that nearly intercepted. Boy, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. Turn possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the yeah. coach's address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. On first down, Means. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Thanks to receivers that spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. We're scoreless after one. Charger football to start quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten.
From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Here's second and eight. Complete Jefferson the target. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Nothing here. Now that was pretty. They executed that core route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because it gets man. It's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice tough run inside, and he gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll drop to throw. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. On third down, means. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up. But... Yeah, it's a new point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. to throw here on first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Looking for the end zone. And this one dropped in the end zone. Oh, that looked like a touchdown, but not to be. And now it's fourth down. That's a good job there, creating the contact, the force in completion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. The Chargers will bring out the field goal unit now. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And the Chargers grab themselves a 3-0 lead. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to unlock yeah. the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. The 
the kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. successful so now second and ten after the incompletion on first down to throw white open man here is Foster and he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13 it'll be a loss of four yards on the play and it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Well, we're always talking about the athleticism we see from these guys on the field. How about the intelligence as well? He recognized that there was a screen pass on that one, broke off his pass rush, and got back to tackle the running back. That's great scouting and great reaction. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Johnson. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. This will wind up a loss on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Cameron Johnston now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Possession switching back now to the Chargers. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one, and that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Chargers in good field position to start out first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Zach Cunningham with a pick, and he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. That throw, Charles, on the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. There's White. And this will be incomplete. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and trying not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. White. And this is going to be incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. 
So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now White. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. On first down, it's White. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. From the shotgun, here's White. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Foster. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And the ball smacked down on the 5-yard line. Here's second and goal. the gun it's white toward the end zone but that's gonna wind up incomplete so many times we've seen him trying to escape the pocket and do something with his legs but in this case the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was gonna get it now they'd really like to make the short field pay off we'll see if they can but this is third and goal again he'll drop to throw and that is incomplete. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. Kaimi Fairbair now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the left half should be a fairly easy one here. Fairbair able to put this one through. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. Field goal is all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Second down and three. Come on, come 
They'll throw now on the final play. Looking left side, and it's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. So we've reached halftime in a low-scoring affair, just a pair of field goals. 3-3 is... You sure you're ready for the third quarter? Need to use a bathroom or anything? All right, cool. Let's go. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Texans getting ready to go here to begin the third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. They'll start on the ground with Foster. And he stopped immediately there. Casey Hayward makes the tackle. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle? That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Looking to throw. White. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? But I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football. Forced out to his left. White's got a first down and more. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. First down throw. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. To throw once more on second and 10. White. Throw right side into the hands of Akins. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag run across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got a bump down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there were very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. 
Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Off play action. Here's White. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by Casey Hayward. And the Chargers are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming up to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Now a look at the Chargers' offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. This has to go down as one of the simple routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Back to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Working with a second and three. They'll go option to the short side. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he will find Winslow on the left side complete. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. I'll give them credit for a good read right there because they've got the main coverage on the right side and set the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. He was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. They'll run on first down. Means. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. it off out of the gun. 
shedding the tape. And he lost the football. red zone opportunity for these guys. It's first and 10 from the 12. Looking to throw. Looking sideline incomplete. Well, we all know possessions are crucial in a tie game, and let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Out of the gun now on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter time. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. We still wait on the first touchdown of the game, but a second field goal now makes it a 6-3 score. Yeah, I know a lot of people would call this the definition of winning ugly. To me, this is gorgeous. I'm a defender, right? I love these kind of games. The tension is high. Who's going to make the play to win it? And right now, that field goal may be the advantage they need. This one away, and off it goes. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. But Houston's offense taking over again, and they really need to forget about their last time out, the turnover that led to a field goal. So now they try to regroup, trailing in the final quarter. Obviously, they'd love a touchdown, but three would suffice. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Flushed out right, and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. A nice little juke, and this will be a Texans first down as he's able to take this up to the 30-yard line. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside, and so many times defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. 
But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. So first and 10 now from the 30. White looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Offense trying to get a little slick there and sneak the back out of the backfield and turn him into the primary deep receiver. But it's good coverage defensively. They were able to break it up. on first down that leads to a second and ten <laughs> throwing again white and that's complete it's a tight end Daniels and brought down but not before reaching the 45 yard line and here we are in the fourth quarter partner and watch them drive for what would be a go ahead touchdown and you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now White. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked up by Casey Hayward, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. And this defense, Charles, coming up with another interception. They have really done an excellent job of locking up these receivers. Yeah, they're really on fire. They are actually doing what they talk about all the time, which is plastering to receivers when they're in their zones. They didn't give up a touchdown in the first half. Haven't done so here in this half either. Blanket in the field going all the way back to the opening drive, and they come up with a pick right there. They'll come out throwing here on first down. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A big game that time for the Chargers. This would made the West Coast offense a staple around the NFL in the 80s and 90s. You don't have to push the ball deep downfield to come up with big plays. And there's an example of that right there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. The defensive coordinators love that. You got a cornerback willing to stick his nose in there, come up on run support, and stop that pop pass dead in its tracks. And partner, one good thing about trying to defend that play, you should see it coming the whole way. You see the receiver coming in motion in your direction. Nice job eluding the blocker, making the play behind the line of scrimmage, but an even better job studying the play before you have to try and defend it in a game. On second down, Means. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. 
They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. They'll keep it on the ground. Means, and he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And his kick is gone. And they continue to lead in the battle of field goals here. It's now 9-3. to three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So now the Texans down on the scoreboard. At time, a huge factor. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. shake off the interception he'll look to throw and it's incomplete boy he doesn't drop many like that for a second down take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now that incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit get in the huddle kind of scan the crowd see if any celebrities are here relax a little bit as they start this big drive so the incompletion and now it's second and ten again from the 25 yard line to throw over the middle complete it's Hopkins and he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32 now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down connection to Foster and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 that gets them the first down but they've still got to move quickly here first down now but the clock continues to move he'll look to throw and he gets this out to Foster on the right side and they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And incomplete on the deep ball. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does, and in the second quarter, he may very well run by him, but in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. Back to throw. And incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Right. He lets this 
swing fly toward the back of the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with the football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number. Can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Charger defense stands tall, and they get the football back. for its next possession. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. Victory formation, time for the Chargers. They take a knee. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zero. Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost felt like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defenses. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.